Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be talking about 15 different NHL players who could be traded very, very soon. Now Frank Saravelli of the Daily Face Off put in a recent article going over 15 players on his trade bait board, aka the most likely players to be traded and there is some very, very interesting names on this list. But who does Frank Saravelli see as the most likely players to be traded throughout this season and who are the biggest names that could be moved throughout this year? Watch till the end for all the tree rumors and all of the player news and make sure with that subscribe button if you are new 55 percent of the people that are watching are not subscribed if you like hockey this channel is the place to be now before we get into everything today i first want to talk about our sponsor for today's video in the new tops skate app that has revolutionized my obsession with trading and collecting hockey cards it is a great way to collect hockey cards digitally there are so many unique sets so many unique players i got this nikolai ehlers card for free without basically doing anything and i got it in one of the first packs i opened and there's so much variety in terms of collective fun so many great missions as well as you collect players and as you get packs you're able to unlock missions and unlock rewards that way which gives you free coins and you get free coins and missions all the time as well without even having to spend anything on the app but by far my favorite feature of the top skate app that truly sets it apart is the ability to trade with any other player on the app if you need a specific card for instance i really wanted this adam fox card you can go out there trade with other players give cards in return and complete your collection that way it's such an amazing experience with the missions with the trading with the collectibles and i highly recommend it download it wherever you get your apps on the app store wherever it might be join me and trade with me at gravity on the app and i'll see you guys on the best hockey card app there is out there right now. Now this trade bait article is extremely interesting. Obviously go check it out if you can. And the first R paragraph that Frank Cervelli says is this, which I found extremely fascinating. The calendars turn to December and the NHL's trade market is heating up. Multiple trade requests are pending, some formal, some informal. Managers have had enough sample size to adequately analyze holes, weaknesses, and potentially other roster and market inefficiencies throughout the league. So we know from Frank Cervelli the trade market is heating up. We're going to get a lot more news and a lot more trade rumors over the next few weeks leading up to the trade deadline and that there is already a ton of activity out there on the market. But who are the 15 names that Frank Cervelli mentions? Well, we're going to go over all of them in today's video. And the first one that Frank Cervelli says on the number one player on his Trey Bay board as of today is the Columbus Blue Jackets goaltender Jonas Corposalo. At age 27, Corposalo has been in a really interesting spot. And Frank Cervelli says this. Pending UFA, 2.8 million AAV. It's the Elvis Merzlikens show in Columbus now and for the foreseeable future. Merzlikens has carried the Blue Jackets and next year begins a fresh five-year 27 million deal. Plus, the Blue Jackets have Neil Tarasov eventually waiting in the wings. Corpusalo has not put in a formal trade request, but GM Yarmo Kekalainen is aware that Corpusalo would be open to an opportunity to play elsewhere. Teams have engaged with Columbus and Corpusalo as recently as the last couple of weeks. He struggled these last two seasons, but made a believer of many ways play in the bubble in 2019 and 2020. So, we get some pretty good info there that with Columbus, they're obviously looking at more options here with Tarasov coming up and obviously with Ellis Merzlikens being as good as he has been. And the thing was, I was always on the Merzlikens is better train. I feel like a lot of people jumped the gun in the 2020 bubble and it was an extremely small sample size with Corporal Solo in that whole run. Although he was playing great, I felt like Merzlikens was always the better goaltender throughout his time in Columbus and I felt like eventually Corporal Solo might be phased out. And we've seen that happen over the past couple of years where he has just been absolutely dreadful. I feel like there's still a lot of teams out there, though, that would like to get him. As of course, he only has one year left in his deal and could still provide some value, especially if he's given another chance on a different team. But now moving on to the second player on Frank Cervelli's trade bait board, he now lists from the Boston Bruins, Jake DeBrusque, who is a newcomer on the trade bait board, but is definitely welcomed. He, of course, requested a trade a few days ago. We cover that in a video on this channel if you want to go check it out. But Frank Cervelli said this, DeBrusque's trade request has been very well publicized, grabbing headlines and generating interest. As many as 12 teams have reportedly inquired about DeBrusque, and though he's needed in the lineup, Bruins GM Don Sweeney has been active in attempting to facilitate a deal and defuse the situation. There have been questions about DeBrusque's attention to detail and effort level publicly via coach Bruce Cassidy. The difficulty is other teams have seen that too, leaving Sweeney in a position of weakness, trying to trade a talented young scorer while his value is seemingly at an all-time low. And that's something that we discussed on this channel 
channel a little bit a while ago too is that these past couple of seasons have been dreadful for Jake DeBrusque and if there was a trade a year and a half ago where DeBrusque was only coming off a one a season I feel like the trade value would have been so much more sky high for Boston now they're in a position where his value is on an all-time low and I still think there's a really good player that, that could come out of it it's just that now that all-time low value isn't really helping the Boston Bruins and they kind of have to bite the bullet at this point but it seems like again another player that will likely get traded very soon. Now the third player on Frank Cervelli's trade bait board that I find very interesting and again I'm assuming that it's most likely to be traded to least likely so again the guys at the very top are the most likely to get moves and at number three Frank Cervelli has from the St. Louis Blues Vladimir Tarasenko and he said this on Tarasenko's situation. Tarasenko has played the role of a good soldier in St. Louis and he's still hoping that the Blues will in turn honor his desire to be moved. His trade request from the summer has not been rescinded. Yeah, or rescinded. Yeah. And in the meantime, what Tarasenko has done is remove any lingering questions about his health. Your Yaroslav Sniper has 19 points in 22 games this season and is on pace for 26 goals. So that's some very interesting news as well when it comes to Frank Cervelli. We knew that Tarasenko was requesting a trade, but it seems like his mood right now in St. Louis is still wanting a trade, still wanting to be out of there. Even if he has done great and the team has done solidly, he still wants to go to a different team and have a different situation under him which I do find respectable. Obviously, Tarasenko has bumped that trade value quite a bit, playing much more consistent and much more complete than he was last year. And I do think we will see a trade, especially come trade deadline time, and especially if St. Louis wants to maybe retain a little bit of salary there. But it seems like that is the breaking point for St. Louis. They don't want to have to do that. And that $7.5 million is still going to be a little bit hard for St. Louis to get rid of. But I do think with Tarasenko, upping that trade value is the best thing he could have done for himself. But now we move on to the fourth player on Frank Severely's trade bait board, and this is another fascinating one. Moving on to the Toronto Maple Leafs and to their defense, and next up with Justin Hall, who in terms of the contract has one more season after this at a $2 million AAV, and Frank Cervelli said this when it came to Hall and his situation. Goaltender Peter Morazic is itching closer to return to the Maple Leafs lineup, having recently returned to practice and with the team. That means the Leafs will need to clear some cap space in order to activate Morazic off LTAR. Kyle Clifford is one one easy transaction, but the Leafs will need to shred more than that. There are other ways, including waving Wayne Simmons or trading Nick Ritchie. By the way, they're definitely not doing that or trading Wayne Simmons. That's just not going to happen. Since Timothy Lilligan has played himself into an everyday role, the Leafs have had interest in both Hall and Travis Dermott, but Hall is older and earns more in a role that's not uh, commensurate for his play. Now, I got to say this too. I definitely agree with what Frank Savarelli is saying here, besides the potentially trading Wayne Simmons part. Again, that is not going to happen. He has been unreal this year, but I do think for the least, they'll definitely prefer Travis Dermott if it does come down to it. He has been fantastic this year and is playing some of his best hockey, seemingly back to that kind of 2018 form we saw from him. And Hole has been a uh, different story at points throughout this year. He's a guy, though, that is a lot more expendable, obviously with a much higher cap pit, and still being locked up for the more uh, for another year, too. I feel like for the least, that is the easy option and the easy guy to trade. But now we can move on to number five and the fifth player on Frank Cervelli's trade bait board. And of course, this is no surprise with the New York Rangers and with Vitaly Kratsov. And one of the few things he says about Kratsov is this. New agent Dan Milstein has permission to find a new home for Kratsov, but it hasn't been easy. We're told Ottawa and Montreal were among the teams interested. Now that Jeff Gorn, the man who drafted Kratsov, is in control of Montreal, could a reunion be in order? The Canadians have three third-round picks, or perhaps an NHL roster player who might help any uh, New York's middle six with Sammy Blay out. And that is interesting. So again, Frank Cervelli alluding to potential trade with the Montreal Canadiens. Now, I'm not sure what maybe Montreal would trade. If it's a middle six player, maybe a guy like Joel Armia, maybe an Arturi Lekkinen. I would like to see that. There are some options in Montreal that the Rangers would definitely like to have. But now we move on to the sixth player on Frank Cervelli's trade bait board, and this might be one of the most interesting ones out there in my opinion. Going on to number six, we're going to move on to the Fourth Panthers and move on to Patrick Hornquist, which was another interesting name to me. Now, he has one more season after this at a 5.3 million AAV, and Frank Cervelli says this, It feels odd to have the third highest paid forward on one of the best teams as a trade target, but that's exactly why Hornquist made the list. His minutes have been significantly reduced, down nearly four minutes per game from 
last season. Whittled down to a fourth line, even strength roll with power play time. And if there's one thing we've learned about Zito, it's that he finds a way to move out salary. And that is interesting to me because I think Patrick Hornquist on the trade market would get a lot in return for Florida, especially if they really do need cap space. I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to maybe get like a first round pick potentially and have the Panthers possibly as a seller in some way. It would be a really weird situation. Obviously, the Panthers are not trying to sell. They're trying to win a cup. But for, with Patrick Hornquist, maybe you trade him and get somebody better in return. Maybe you do get potentially a better forward and perhaps that fits better in Florida's even strength system at least. There's a lot of potential there. I'm not quite sure really how to make of it, but I do think Patrick Hornquist would get a lot of value out there even again if his minutes and his production has dropped so far this year. Now coming at number seven, Frank Cervelli has from the Vancouver Canucks, JT Miller. And once again, no surprise here. And we've talked about JT Miller a ton on this channel. Now, one of the things that <laughs> that Frank Cervelli says is a number of teams have been circling around Miller, including one of his old teams, the New York Rangers. I just want to talk about that for a second. Uh, New York, if you're going to trade for a Vancouver Canuck, trade for Bo Horvat. That's, that's all I got to say. Don't trade for JT Miller. It would be fun. It would be crazy. But trade for Bo Horvat. It's the better way to do things. But now moving on to number nine, we're going to go to a guy that we've heard a little bit recently about a potential trade with the Vegas Golden Knights, and that is Riley Smith. Another interesting name when it comes to Vegas and potential trade options, and he's been listed as a guy that could potentially be moved. He's a pending UFA after this year, will obviously be rental if he is traded. And when it comes to a few quotes, Frank Cervelli said this, Smith is at the top of the list of, of the options Vegas has to deal. His contract is expiring. If Nick Foligno fetched one first and two fourth rounds, picks, Smith should net a better return. A reunion with coach Gerard Glant on the Rangers with that team that needs help on the right side would make a lot of sense. And I gotta say this right now, for Vegas, it, 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 it's kind of becoming more and more clear that they probably aren't going to be able to re-sign Riley Smith. He's going to ask for more than $5 million on this next deal, and he's been solid so far this year as well. 10 goals, 16 points, and 22 games played. He is a bona fide top six forward, and for the Rangers, I mean, I was talking about JT Miller earlier, Riley Smith would be another interesting option, though again, I feel like Bo Horvat would be the best choice available. Riley Smith would also not be too bad, but again, going back to the point of what Nick Foligno made, I am not even sure if Riley Smith would get more. I feel like Nick Foligno was mostly just a, oh, he's a gritty player that can produce when he needs to. Obviously, that didn't really happen in Toronto, but that's kind of the angle that most teams were going at when it came to him. Riley Smith doesn't really quite provide that snarl that Nick Foligno does, so we'll see what his trade ask actually is, but I do think for the Rangers, it could definitely be an interesting bet to make. Now, we are starting to get into some really juicy names here. Coming in at number 10 of the 10 player that Frank Cervelli mentions, let's move on to the Pittsburgh Penguins, and let's move on to Brian Rust, an interesting name out there from Frank Cervelli, and he says this, There's been so much focus on the decisions around Chris Letang and Evgeny Malkin as Pittsburgh's big name pending free agents that not much attention has been brought and paid to Brian Rust. He's currently injured and working through an injury, but picked up 9 points in 12 games to start this season. The Penguins engaged in talks with Rust on perimeter on a new deal before the season started, but it's gone quiet since, and he remains a strong candidate to be on the move should Pittsburgh's playoff charge fall short. Rust has scored a 36-goal clip over each of the last two shortened seasons when adjusted to an 82-game race. So that is very, very interesting. Again, the Pittsburgh obviously has a ton of turnover that could be made over this next year, and obviously right now, Pittsburgh isn't in a playoff spot. They're on the outside looking in, and they're a team that should obviously make the playoffs, but the injury woes have definitely been there, and I feel like like for Pittsburgh, I mean, I think Frank Cervelli makes a really good point here because Brian Rust would be one of the most interesting guys out there and I think mean, could get quite a bit. If we're talking about a guy like a Nick Foligno, Brian Rust plays with that snarl, plays with that intensity while also putting up fantastic numbers. I'm pretty sure he's been a point per game around that range over the past two seasons. Just being a spectacular player and super underrated as well. I feel like he'd get a ton in the market and probably get at least a first and a second in my opinion. Now, moving on to the 11th spot and Frank Savelli's board. This is another interesting player, but mostly because of the success his team has had. I'm kind of surprised to see him on this list. Next up to the Anaheim Ducks is Ricard Raquel. And Frank Cervelli doesn't really put much info in the actual paragraph when it comes to trading Ricard Raquel. He, he talks about how Bob Murray was replaced and how there's an intermittent GM and how uh, potential moves with pending UFAs like Hampus Lindholm and, and Ricard Raquel could potentially be made. But he doesn't really go into detail with that, which is a little bit disappointing because the Ducks have been really solid to start out this year. And I think with the Anaheim situation, they might be a team that actually just maybe even tries to make the playoffs, maybe not 
even trading anybody and just decides to try and do and try and make things work with what they've got. I could see that actually being the case, but if they are to trade somebody, I think Rikarmi 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 makes the most sense and is probably the most expendable pending UFA. They could also get a lot back for that. Now, with the Ducks being in a position where they could make the playoffs and maybe not wanting to trade their UFAs, we go to a pretty similar situation at number 12 and the San Jose Sharks with Tomas Hurdle. 12 on Frank Cervelli's trade bait board. Tomas Hurdle is right smack dab in the thick of it. And when it comes to Frank Cervelli, he points out how, of course, it is a delicate balance for Doug Wilson, who has to go between the Sharks being a lot better than expected and still potentially trying to trade Tomas Hurdle. To me, when it comes to San Jose, I think they should be trading Tomas Hurdle every Every single day of the week. I feel like the Sharks have played well so far this year, but Tomas Hurdle is a guy that could get really a truly amazing return for them. And with a lot of their aging core right now, I feel like that is the best they're going to be able to work with. I feel like for San Jose, it's a great opportunity though to potentially jumpstart that retool. And again, even though this the season has been solid so far for them, I feel like it may be maybe just a little bit inconsistent to start out the year. And I don't know if they're going to be quite in that position at the end of the year. But I do think for San Jose, if they are going to trade somebody, it should be Tomas Hurdle. And even though I love him in San Jose, he's the guy that gets them the most bag and gets them the most assets if they truly want to be contending within the next few years. But now we move on to number 13 and another player that I had in my 10 players that I thought was going to be traded list a few days ago at number 13. This time with the Arizona Coyotes and this time with Phil the Thrill Kessel. And I just love seeing Phil the Thrill Kessel in here because I want to see him win that freaking Stanley Cup, baby. We got to make it happen. And one of the interesting things that that Frank Sterling really does point out here is, of course, the cost when it comes to Phil Kessel, he being a uh, pending UFA at $6.8 million AAV. But he's a guy that is really likely to be traded because of how many draft picks Arizona has been stockpiling really over the past year and a half. They're obviously want to get more of that for this 2022 draft and have been so far in the last year. So I think when it comes to Phil Kessel, he's a slam dunk and it's going to happen already. I mean, if the Rangers get it done, I would not be mad about that either. Now going on to number 14 on Frank Cervelli's trade board, he has Henrik Borgström. Not really not anything too new. Obviously, the Blackhawks ended up trading for him recently and are now looking to trade for him. I just am sad that his his development was completely botched. He was amazing in the NCAA a few years ago and has uh, turned out pretty sour in the NHL, which is definitely unfortunate to see. But of course, at number 15 on Frank Cervelli's trade board, he has from the San Jose Sharks... Evander Kane. Yep, it's about time. <laughs> of course, he's on this list. And Frank Cervelli does mention how there's a there's a there's a toxic uh, there's a toxic thing going around with Evander Kane and how that reputation is following him in a potential trade. But he does say at 3.5 million, if that deal is reduced, obviously retained salary, that a deal would be a lot more likely to be made. And how his agent and they're trying to work with a unique plan in the AHL. I don't care about any of that bull crap. At the end of the day, Evander Kane should not be in the NHL. I've said it time and time again, it is a privilege to play in this league and Evander Kane simply does not deserve it, okay? This is a horrible human being. This is a guy that has time and time again proved that every single place he goes, he becomes hated. It's just I, I don't see where there's much value getting it done. I, one of the things that I didn't mention last time with Evander Kane is how all these NHL teams, every single one, tried to say how they ha they're trying to build a great team culture how they're trying to build a great locker room, and how that's so important for playoff success. Put your money where, it's, where your mouth is and don't trade for Evander Kane then. If you truly care about locker room success, do not trade for Evander Kane. Just don't. And I, I hope for NHL GMs, it doesn't happen. We'll see what happens. But again, it seems like even at $3.5 million, there might be some interest out there. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more videos and trade for content just like this. Comment down below, what do you guys think about Frank Cervelli's trade bait board? What do you think about the players listed? Where do you think these guys will go? When do you think they'll get traded? And what do you see the trades actually looking like? Let me know your thoughts. Of course, make sure you share this video with your friends. Get the trade bait board out there to any guy, any anybody you guys know online. And make sure you click on this card for all my trade for content right on one playlist. My name is Nathan. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.